What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack -a pack episode. Today we are opening up a less exciting pack than last uh, last episode unfortunately, but we do have a Dragon's Maze pack. Uh, this set is like notoriously one of the worst in Magic's recent-ish history. Uh, it's very easy to get your hands on, very low cost, and not a whole lot in it. That being said, uh, there are some interesting cards, specifically Voice of Resurgence, which is in my opinion one of the best cards from the set. Uh, but there's also um, Ral's Eric, which is another favorite of mine. Uh, we will, of course, look through this pack as if it is a limited environment. Pack one, pick one, uh, see what we can get. Hopefully we find something interesting, uh, though I know for a fact, again, the last pack opening, if you didn't see it, you really need to go look at it. It was kind of insane. So uh, we'll go ahead and go through all of these cards. So our first one is Rakdos Strike. It is a 1-2 two for 2 and a black. It has Flying and Unleash. Uh, Unleash, if you don't know, basically says when it enters the battlefield, you can choose to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. If you do, it cannot block. So as long as it has just a plus one, plus one counter on it, it cannot block. So that means if it gets the counter in another way, uh, it still can't block, just so you're aware. Uh, but this is actually a decent flyer. Uh, it comes in fairly early and can do some serious damage, so I actually kind of dig that card. Uh, Viashino First Blade, a 1, a red, and a white for a 2-2 two, two with haste. When it enters the battlefield, uh, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. This is actually a very good aggressive card as well. I think I'd rather have the Drake so far just because it doesn't really commit me to any color uh, other than black, right? So this kind of puts me into the Boros uh, aggro deck, which is a good deck, don't get me wrong. But I think I'd rather stay open. I think that's pretty important and limited. So... Uh, mind static three and a blue for an instant counter target spell unless it's controller pays six I tend not to like uh, counter spells and things like that at least not too many of them in limited uh, Particularly because it's really generally one on board and so a one-for-one -one trade like that really is not the best uh, So I don't like that uh, Mutants prey one green for an instant target creature you control get uh, with a plus one plus one counter on it fights target creature and opponent controls uh, I like fight effects quite a lot. This one I don't like, and the reason being you really are dependent upon a creature having that plus one, plus one counter. Uh, sometimes that's easy to do, and the the Simic deck, uh, they actually run quite a number of plus one, plus one counter ability kind of things. You can also kind of combo it with Unleash a little bit, but uh, generally speaking, this is not my, kind of, my favorite kind of card, so I would not pick that. <coughs> uh, Sunspire Gatekeepers, a 2-4 four for 4. When it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates, put a 2-2 White Knight creature token with Vigilance onto the battlefield. Uh, this is a powerful effect, actually, but I don't particularly care for it. Um, it's really good if you already have the gates, and generally you will pick up a couple of them. Uh, but if you don't end up playing some of these colors, you're really... it, it Nine times out of ten is just going to be a 2-4. Uh, and so, not really my favorite kind of card. I think I'd still rather have the Drake. Uh, Pilfered Plans... One, a blue, and a black for a sorcery. Target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, and you draw two cards. Uh, this is actually a very powerful effect in terms of just drawing two cards off of one. Uh, it does bring you up in card advantage and things like that. And the mill sometimes gets lucky. It's really not the biggest deal in the world uh, unless you're in the dedicated mill deck, which there kind of is one. Uh, but I don't particularly like this card. I still think I would rather have the creature. Uh, Rakdos Cluestone. Three of any color uh, for an artifact. You can tap it to add black or red to your mana pool. You can then also pay a black and a red and tap it, sacrifice it, and draw a card. Uh, the clue stones are actually great. I really like these, but I would tend to take them later in the pack uh, when I already know kind of what colors I want to play or if I'm on the splash for anything. Uh, so not a bad pick. Definitely not what I would pick right off. Uh, battering Krasis, two and a green for a 2-1 with Trample. It also has Evolve, and Evolve is actually a very good mechanic. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than this creature, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. And this actually combos well with that fight effect that we saw just a few cards ago. Uh, I like this card. I don't know that I'd pick it over the Drake, though, to be honest. I think I prefer the Flying over the Trample. Uh, that being said, because this has only one toughness, it's actually quite easy to uh, trigger the Evolve. Uh, and so you will probably get a counter or two on it before it dies and probably get some damage in. Uh, but personally, I think I'd rather have the Drake. Um, Maze Abomination, a 4-5 for 6 with Death Touch. Multicolor creatures you control have Death Touch. This card actually seems quite good. Um, 
Is it better than the Drake? I don't know. Uh, I really like the Death Touch. Obviously, this is a stronger card, and it gives some... Uh, just side side note, it gives some buff to your multicolor creatures. Um, I think I would try this over the Drake, uh, but again, I, that could be actually very wrong, so I do apologize. Selesnia Cluestone, three for an artifact. Uh, tap it to add green or white, and then you can do the same. Pay green, white, tap it, sacrifice it, and draw a card. Again, same thing with the other Cluestone. I like these, but I wouldn't first pick them. Uh, Showstopper. An instant for one black and red until the end of the turn. Creatures you control gain. When this creature dies, it deals two damage to target creature and opponent controls. Uh, can definitely deal some damage, but it requires setup, right? And I prefer not to use cards like that. Uh, this is an interesting card. So Debt to the Deathless. X, two white, and two black. Uh, for a sorcery, each opponent loses two times X life, and you gain life equal to uh, the life loss this way. This is actually really powerful. Um... I I think it's not really meant for limited, to be fair, because it is very high in, in its casting cost. But it is a game winner uh, if you do kind of go late game with it, if you build sort of a control-y deck. Uh, this can actually really, really finish off the game for you, or at least get very close. Uh, so I'm going to consider it. We will see. Uh, Putrefy, one, a black, and a green for an instant. Destroy target, artifact, or creature. It can't be regenerated. I really like that card. Uh, and then uh, we have for our rare ready and willing. Uh, these I'm not a huge fan of, to be honest, at least not this one. But ready, instant for one, a green and a white. Creatures you control are indestructible this turn. Untap each creature you control. And willing, uh, one, a white and a black. Creatures you control gain death touch and lifelink until end of turn. Uh, these are both really just combat tricks. They're powerful combat tricks nonetheless. But um, I don't think I would pick that. And then we have an Azorius Guildgate here. So it's, for me, it's really between these three cards. Uh, this definitely, to me, has the highest upside, I would say. Uh, this is just kind of a very powerful sort of late game bomb. Uh, and this is really just the safe pick, I would say, because uh, you'll be able to kill a creature with it. Removal is always a good thing to have, uh, so I'm not opposed to it. Mm, what do I want to pick? My gut tells me Putrefy just because it's the safe pick. I know that's kind of lame. Uh, so I would actually probably go with the debt. Let's go with the debt. Uh, if you guys think I'm wrong, please let me know. I could very much be off base with this one. But uh, I do like this card. Again, it has really high upside if you can get there. Uh, and so, and I like to try random stuff. So that, that would be my pick. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date for all of our content. But... With that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you in the next episode.